Hey everyone, I'm Joel Green and welcome to Curiosity Quest, the show that explores what you, the viewer, are curious about. Now, one of the most popular categories of letters that we receive is on how they make household items and everyday things that we use. In fact, Matt from Highland, California wrote, Dear Joel, I'm curious, how do they make foam plates? Well, Matt, think about it. How many of us go to backyard barbecues or fast food restaurants or out to eat, come across them and use them? Almost all of us, which is why we continue to get letters like this on topics of things that are so common. In fact, whether we buy it or it's given to us, we still use them. Because of you, we are out here at Dark Container Corp in Corona, California. We're going to find out how they make foam plates and other items. So let's begin today's Curiosity Quest. Container Corp, and I'm here with the production manager, Scott. Scott, thanks for having us out here. Oh, it's my pleasure. But you rushed me through the building, you put a cap on my head, and now we're out back. <laughs> well, this is where it all starts. Tell us a little bit about Dark Container Corp. Well, Dark Container is the largest manufacturer of foam cups in the world. This particular facility makes single-use food service, what I call restaurant-type stuff, okay? We make plates, we make bowls, your clamshell hinge trays, and things of this nature. We make lids and that type of product. Okay, and we're going to get to see them. How Absolutely. Made it okay. Why, why are we out back? <laughs> I'm sorry, but why are we out here? <laughs> well, if you look behind you, you have this rail car. It holds approximately 200,000 pounds of our raw material, polystyrene bead, about the size of a pen cap. From here, we unload it through that tube, and we actually use a giant blower and blow it into giant stylus. Now, I hear this, like, this, this tick, tick, tick. What is, what is that over here? What you're hearing is the raw material being pulled or sucked out of this car. And that's how you get it out? Well, this car is just about empty, but <laughs> typically you'll hear that thing running. So once it's empty, what, what happens to the train? We call our friends of the railroad, they'll come pick it up and replace it with another one. Well, and how often do you receive these, uh, these cars? Oh, typically once or twice a week. Well, how many plates are you making here? Quite a few. <laughs> There's a lot of plates. All right. We'll get a chance to show you all that. Hey, when, you, when you walk me through the facility, it's like huge here. Huge. How big is this? Under roof, the whole facility is just over a million square feet. Now that's hard for me to grasp, a million square feet. But I think about like my house, how many square feet I have in my house. That's huge. It's big. <laughs> that's really it's huge. It's big. For a lot, a lot, a lot of my houses here. All right, so once it's off the rail car, it's heading that way? Yes. So let's go. Let's go. From the rail car, you can hear the blowers running in the background, and they go into these large silos. So these large silos are filled with those little beads That's you're correct. Me. How many do you have? We have four on this side and another six on the other. So a total of 10 silos. Wow, that's a lot. And they'll hold anywhere from 200 to 400,000 pounds each. So the entire rail car plus two, two, two rail, rail cars. cars can fit in one of these. That's correct. Wow, are these going all the time? We pull on them based on different products we're making mm -hmm. just to maintain inventory levels. But yeah. Wow, okay. Then from here, they, were they piped into the building? Yes, or? correct. They go overhead, okay. directly behind me. All right, well, let's, let's, enough talking. Let's go make some product. Okay. All right. Here's your fun fact. Polystyrene was discovered in 1839 in Berlin. Woo. I love this form of transportation, Scott. Isn't that nice? Cool. So what is this? Okay, here we have our foam repel tanks and day bins. So all that raw material you saw us unloading at the rail cars, yeah. down in the silos, eventually ends up right here. So all, all through these, these pipes you have going through, look at all the pipes in this building. Yep. They're coming here. Yep. From here, they get sucked out of the bottom, and they get blown overhead to the extrusion lines. And that's what's over here, huh? Yep. That's right. All right. Let's go. Let's do it. I like this. This is cool. I'm wearing a seatbelt on a golf cart, by the way. All right, 
so I guess we're going to be making some foam plates, huh? Yep. Now, you said you had that resin that I do. we can see what it looks like? Let me grab it. Hang on. Oh, wait. What is polystyrene? Type of fabric, I think. A chemical. A singer? It sounds like a singer. A singer? It sounds like a, yeah. Um, I think polystyrene is the stuff that comes off plants. Styrofoam. So this is the raw poly. The raw polystyrene. It looks like diamonds almost. It's beautiful, isn't it? Yeah, well, I wouldn't go that far, but it looks like diamonds. <laughs> so take us to the beginning. What happened? Okay. From those day bins we just saw, material is transferred, blown overhead. There's actually scales right above us on this floor, this roof above us. Okay. Up there, it's all pre-measured and weighed, blended together, and then dropped into the feed throat of an extruder. This is the feed hopper where all that raw material, all that bead falls ends up right here. From here, it goes through a magnet set of writers. Magnets? Magnets, just in case there's any kind of impurity, something off the pipe. From here, it drops into the feed throat. Inside this machine is a screw with what they call a barrel or a big tube. It screws inside the tube. Material drops on that and just keeps rotating and pushing it forward. Why, if this is closed so we can't actually see That's it, correct. right? Around that tube is a bunch of heaters. So the heaters turn on and it heats up that tube and as the material travels through it, it melts. So we get to this point of the extrusion process. This is where we put a gas in it to help that plastic become foam. Oh, what kind of what gas do you put in? It's called isopentane. Blends with all the plastic as it's being melted. Goes through the process here, through a screen filter. A screen filter? A screen filter. The screen is designed to catch your any impurities before it makes its way to the bottom. Travels through the screen, crosses over into the secondary extruder. That purpose of that extruder is to melt it. Uh -huh. The purpose of this extruder is to condition it. What is an extruder? Somebody that extrudes things. Makes something 3D or something? A wheel. A person. An extruder is something that takes something out of the ground. A bug? <laughs> no. You're melting it, now you're conditioning it. Right. You're getting it ready. Getting it ready. Working it out. Right. Good. It. All right. Then we get down here to where all the magic happens. Whoa! This portion of the machine is what they call an extrusion die. Pressure on that die is anywhere from 2,000 to 3,000 PSI. It'd be like taking a, a tube of toothpaste, hitting it really fast. Easy. That's right. Really fast. When it exits the die and hits atmosphere, again, it's under a heavy or a lot of pressure there. Yeah. Well, when it hits that atmospheric pressure, there's nothing to hold it back. So that gas wants to start expanding. Right. And as it expands, it makes it foam. Wow. Careful, it's a little warm. Oh, it is warm. I'm, I'm not going to, I feel like I'm going to pop it or something. So this is like goo at, back That's here. That's correct. Goo, and then you just push it out here, and then... And it expands. The air, natural air just expands. The key is we want it to expand, but we don't want it to expand all the way. Oh, okay. So we control the amount of expansion here, so we can expand some here, and the rest of it is expanded over in the forming process. Oh, okay. Okay. We'll see that in a bit. Right. One big, like, tube. It's a giant tube. At this point, underneath this tube, as you call it, you can't really see it, but they have what they call a cooling can or a cooling mandrel. On the inside of this can, we're running chilled water through it. That chilled water is cooling the inside surface of that foam. We're actually dragging that foam right over that can to cool it off. Ah, that's how we cool the inside. The outside, we're blowing air on it. Oh, okay. Is that what all these tubes yes. are up here? What is we're it? doing is we're taking this tube and we're cutting it on both sides, uh -huh. and then we'll fold it open and wind it up. And this is just continuous, right? Yes. Wow. Comes out of the pull roll stack over a series of rollers, and then we wind it up on a spindle. Yeah. Now, how will you know this is uh, full? Each one of these rolls are designed to be a specific amount of feet in length. We have digital readout, and the operators will determine the size of the roll and then program those counters to tell us exactly how many feet are on a roll. Okay. So this roll is destined to be 4,200 feet. 4,200 feet. That and sounds like a lot. Yeah. Well, it is quite a bit. And at 4,200 feet, the alarm will sound. The operator will come over and cut this roll over and keep the line running. It never shuts down. You want to see it cut over? Oh, yeah. All right, here we go. Wow. Look the action happens. So what, is he just re-rolling?
That's it? That's it. You have a quality control. Absolutely. Yeah. Matter of fact, the operators will come by. Once this roll has been wound up, at the tail end of the roll, they will cut a section off, bring it over to the table, and we have a device. Very technical. <laughs> the operator will set on there and cut a sample. It's a known size, uh -huh. 60 square inches. So they literally take a piece out of this with, with a knife? Yep, they cut it off with a knife, set it on a weight scale, and get the weight for 60 square inches. 6.98 grams. 6.98 grams, okay. And it has to be somewhere in that. We have a very specific range we allow for each product. Yes, okay, so now where are they gonna take this? Take this guy over to our scale, go weigh it, yep. write the roll weight on it, and get it ready for production. This is good. What else can be made from polystyrene? It's different stuff like uh, toys and um, maybe even microphones and stuff like uh, glasses. Light bulbs. Plastic plates. Napkins. Dishes. Glasses. And clothes. All right, looks like we need a change out going on over here. Yes, we do. We made the foam, yep. we brought it over here, we quality inspected it, yep. it's got my rubber stamp of approval. You see how looking this game is? What are you talking about, Joel? And I can't hear anything because of these earplugs. I'm yelling, I'm sorry. All right, the operator's now gonna move this roll, 466 pounds. Now, does it ruin the foam as it's moving up and down? Not at all. That foam is actually going to expand when it gets to the other side of our product. Okay, now we control the expansion over there. Yes. And you're saying that it's you want it to expand. We want it to expand some more here. <laughs> Why? Foam is thin here, so we can make a roll of reasonable size and weight. So we put it through our preheat oven, we expand it the rest of the way to make sure it's the right thickness for the product we're making. Okay. Now it's just pulling it in. That's right. From here it goes through our preheat oven. Uh-huh. So we're taking it from room temperature here and heating it up to approximately 400 degrees. This is weird. Why is it only pulling a section out as it's moving? Our forming process is what we call an index process. It moves and stops. It has to move into position so when the former comes together, it's going to fix the stop. Oh, wow. Now, what's with this? It looks like a tongue. It's giant. That is actually there to make sure that the sheet is stained by the infrared sensor. That oh. way, it knows when to start and when to stop. Oh, right here on the ground. That's correct. Oh, OK. So when it goes down so low, it starts up. It starts back up. Oh, wow. Is that why it's never touching that silver thing on the ground? That's to keep it from being contaminated. Oh, OK. All right, so it's going through, heating up under here at 400 right. degrees. This is the thermal former. We have a top and bottom mold base. Inside each section is a series of mold, either a female mold or a male mold. It opens, I saw an index over there, uh -huh. move and stop. That's why it's moving, in. it'll move and stop here. Molds come together and push. Now, when you say index, you're referring to movement. Correct. Okay. So, wow, that's a, that's a tech term. So, would you say it's indexing? Yes. It's indexing. Here's your fun fact. Plastic is versatile, lightweight, flexible, moisture resistant, durable, strong, and relatively inexpensive. It's a lot of things. So, a vacuum is sucking it up, and some pushing, and air is blowing it into. We got air and vacuum. Oh, they're sucking it up and then they're pushing on it to make it big. Oh, wow, okay. They work together. Now, can we uh, touch the side right here? Sure. Warm. Put it back. Yeah. From here, it goes up into a canopy in the So I put it through what we call a trim press. A trim, trim, or press. Trim press, okay. So it's constant motion. Correct. What's happening? Sheets coming through with the parts made in it. This device here actually cuts those plates right out of the sheet. Oh, right. It's like, yeah. right. You can actually see it right through that hole. Right. Oh, yeah. Check that out. So it's just sucking them right out, not cutting them, right? Yeah, it's cutting. It's, it's got cutting. a punch on one side and push right through it. It's cut it like a pair of scissors. Oh, wow. And then, oh, here we go. We got plates. Can I stand up here? Oh, my God. 
foam blades. Nine inch foam blades. Wow. There's a whole lot of them. A whole bunch of them. Now, will this machine continue to run day yes. in and day out? Or? Yes. Really? We run approximately 23 and a half hours out of 24. That many plates are being made? Yeah. Six plates, isn't it? Yeah, yeah. I'm, in fact, I'm spent. Sorry, I'm just making thunderstorms. You're saying there's really not a whole lot of difference between this and this. That's correct. The same raw material. It's all polystyrene, number six, recyclable. People are going to be like, come on. Come on. It's true. This foam actually starts out in its raw material form looking like this. And the, the pelts that we saw. Correct. So that's crazy. So how does it get like foamy? For Again, lack of a better word. We'll put a blowing agent in it and a nucleant. It causes it to foam in the extrusion process. Okay. And how do you get this to be clear? Well, it's very simple. We just simply melt those pellets and then put it through a machine. It extrudes it through a flat sheet and stretch it. Okay. So the only difference is there's a foaming agent here. Correct. Uh, an expansion agent. That's Wait. correct. And this doesn't happen. That's right. But they're the same plastic number six. That's right. Wow. Okay. Why is this so much bigger than this? Because this holds a lot more air than that. Part of that foam is the air that's in it. Now, how heavy are these rolls right now? About 1,000 pounds a piece. 1,000? So this is about 1,000 pounds, and this is 412 pounds. How much of this is air? Oh, quite a bit. Quite a bit. Quite a bit. Like percentage-wise, you know. I would say probably 50% of that. And then this one is? No air. No air. Why is this white? Again, when it's clear, translucent. As it foams, you break up all of that cell structure, so you can't see it. It's no longer clear. Okay. As it forms those bubbles and makes foam, it changes the appearance of the plastic. And you make the same thing out of the... Out we're of this gonna, we're gonna show you. Please, show me. Okay. I'm following you. Why is styrofoam white? That's how it's made. Yeah. To keep the item in there clean or something? It can't be any other, any other color and it might mess up, it might mess up the foam. I think styrofoam is white because of the different chemicals they put in it and the different amount of mixes. Because they make it out of white things. Because if styrofoam was a different color, then um, there would be a different name for it. Okay, as I was telling you earlier, you know, styrene number six can be made either in foam or clear. The process you see here is very similar to what I showed you in the foam process. The yes. difference is the sheet is a little clear. Okay. So we're making clear trays out of the hinge trays. Now this is uh, a heavier plastic? Yes. A much heavier plastic? The same material, just a little different mill, and it doesn't have all the air in it. Wow, so you make plates and hinge trays yep. and clamshells and everything out of this same material. Yep. Same stuff. Okay. It's all recyclable. It's funny because this line looks exactly the same as the one we The processes are very similar. Okay, so it's coming off the roll yeah. through the unwind station and into the preheat oven. Okay. And again, from here we're heating it up. How, how hot are you getting this one? It's about 400 and 450 degrees. Really? So it even reacts the same under heat. Yeah. All right. Of course, we get down here and you have a forming machine. Again, two-part mold base, male and female mold come together. It'll index in there, very similar to the phone box. So these are like the ones you see at like delis. And That's correct. You see a lot of, you know, deli sandwiches. You'll see cookies, salads, things of that nature. Wow, it's so the same thing, and it's cutting over here? Yep, there is. I'm moving right along, people. We're going. Let's go. And here you have it. And that's it. It's being cut out. Cuts right out. Again, all the scrap down through a grinder. From there, we repelletize it and make more product out of it. So it's the same thing, huh? Incredible. So why use this 
over your other foam plates or over something else. A lot of people will use this product because of appearance. You can actually see the food in this fridge. So you can put a sandwich, potato salad, things of that nature like you'd see in a deli, and it's very presentable. Very cool. So I have to recycle. Yep. Right down the hole. All right, here it goes. Adios. I feel bad. I feel like I just tossed it away, but it's going back to your box. coming back around. All right, going back around. What does a grinder sound like? A room. I'm sorry, what was that? Zoo. Yeah. We're going down to see the grinder. Wow. That, holy mackerel. So these are all the grinders? Yes, they are. Like all that, all that foam, number six scrap, will drop down through the floor from that trim press up above, drop through that chute into the granulator or grinder, and sit there and chop it right up. Where does it all go? I mean, this is like the end of it, right? Drops right into the bottom. We have a blower. Oh, okay. And blows it right up through the tube and back over to the refill. There's a lot of grinders. A lot of grinders. This gives you an idea how many lines they have here. Look at all these grinders. And there's two that way. And there's another grinder pin just like it. Wow. So all the product that... What percentage of everything, you know, leaves this back? 99.7% of all the raw material is left in finished goods. Where does it all go from here? We'll show you the rebuild process. You just brought me down here. Let's go. All right. Here's your fun fact. The term plastic came from a Greek word meaning fit for molding. Well, we went down and saw the grinders. You yeah. saw the blowers that it blows all that scrap up through the pipe. Yeah. Those well, pipes come through and they feed a day bin such as that one. What, really? So that bin is full of all the ground up foam number six scrap that we make in house. From there, we blow it again into the machine behind us. Okay. So it'll go into the feed room, get remelted. Down here at the end, you'll see it repelletized and we're reusing. So everything from this plant comes through here and gets repelletized yes. that you use. And now, this is, what's this water right here? Again, as the material's coming out of that extruder, it's pretty hot. Again, we have to remelt it. Purpose of the water bath is to cool it off so it won't stick. So this is the uh, the plastic again. That's correct. Back in so we'll take machine. that and we'll reintroduce it and make more roll stock and make more plates. So this is what we saw at the beginning, and it's reused. That's correct. Recycled. About how many of these do you think it takes to make one foam plate? Thousands. Thousands? Thousands. Of these. Yes. They just heat up and expand and there you go. Yep. Wow. And that's how you make foam and plastic plates. Right. right. How are plates made? Make the paper hard and I guess they shape it into a circle. Paper and it's smashed together in a factory. You melt glass. It are plastic, then they melt them and they let them dry. Plates are made by taking porcelain and putting them in molds. Uh, I think they use the, the polyhistering, styring. <laughs> <laughs> and so next time you're at a restaurant, you're out to eat, and you happen to somebody hand you one or you happen to get one, you know how it's made. Well, I want to thank Scott, I want to thank everyone out here at Dark Container Corp, and I especially want to thank you, Matt, for sending us on today's Curiosity Quest. Now, if there's something that you're curious about, even if it's as simple as something you do or handle on a daily basis, let us hear from you. Go to curiosityquest.org, click on the Send Us On A Quest link, and simply tell me what you're curious about. And it could be you that sends us on our next amazing adventure. Now remember, every great adventure begins with just one person's curiosity. So I wonder what you're curious about. I'm Joel Green, and I'll see you next time. Speaking of all these plates and trays, man, I'm hungry. Can we go eat? Sure, let's go. Let's go.
Plastic is versatile, lightweight, flexible, moisture resistant, durable, strong, and resident. Polystyrene was discovered in 19. Yeah. Expanded polystyrene was discovered in Pittsburgh. Pin, Pittsburgh. <laughs> if you'd like to order a copy of this episode or a previous episode, visit us at www.curiositycourse.org.